MMA Adsbreaker, I'm Frank Trigg. That is, of course, Hoppa, Travis Brown, getting ready to fight for Bishop Vadum on UFC on Fox 11 in Orlando, Florida. That's a lot. That's a big mouthful. How many, how many times yeah. a week do you have to say it in an interview? Uh, it's, uh, you know, at this point, it's just the, the it's like you have, I answer, I have like given answers to certain questions. And when, when a reporter will ask me a different question, I'll, I'll give a totally random answer, but it like sounds rehearsed because I thought he asked me something, but then I was like, but then I go off on this tangent. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just because they're all the same. They're all the same questions, you know? So you, you have like your go-to answers. How do you feel? Great. Best training camp in my life. Training camp was good. Training camp was amazing. Best training camp in my life. Best card in my life. Strong as I've ever been. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, uh, Thanks. Be like, so what we'll your underwear? And you'll be like, yeah. So on April nineteenth, I'm really feeling good about it, and da da da. And you're like, uh, no, I asked you, uh, <laughs> uh, what the flavor of coffee did you drink this morning? I'm like, oh, but you're not talking about April nineteenth. And they're like, no. It's <laughs> it becomes a part of training camp. Just the training is mundane. Now the press is becoming mundane. Mm -hmm. what what the hell do you do to deal with it i mean it, it's got to be ridiculous at this point you know you know what i mean like when i was first started in this um i told myself you know like i am not going to be one of those guys that once i start making it that's going to like kind of push the other people aside you know what i mean like oh yeah oh i just use you as a stepping stone uh, in the media kind of stuff you know what i mean and so I did stories and, and interviews and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, I, I, at this point now, like I, I get to a point where sometimes people are like, Hey, you know, can we do a, can we do an interview with you? And I've, you know, in the past I've been like, yeah, sure. And then the people, they don't have questions set up. It's a very awkward interview and it really does like, and I hate to say it, but it feels like a waste of time because like, listen, man, like, you know, there's stuff that I'm focusing on stuff that I'm, that I'm doing. And the last thing I want to do right now is do an interview that six people are going to see with a guy that doesn't know how to ask questions. It's like, you know, like, let me just take over for you and I'll give you answers to questions that you should have asked. And then you'll look good. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? And I hate, to, I hate to feel that way. I hate to say that, but you know, like when you get to a certain point, man, like your, your time is money. You know what I mean? And, and it's energy and it's energy that, you know, you're being pulled in all these different places, you know, and I, and I never really saw that. And, and I thought guys were like, Oh, he's being too big for his britches. You know, and I was that guy. I was saying that about other people. And it's like, man, now it's like, it's hard to please everybody. You know, you, you can't do it. It's impossible. And that, that's why I'm so grateful. Well, not only with you, but with a, a, any interview I get, because there are so many people there, there, there are legitimately, you've got mainstream. When I first started, we, there was three people. It was, it was yeah. sure dog. Full Contact Fighter, and MMA.com, dot, dot .tv, which is now MixedMartialArts.com. That was it. And so we got interviewed. Like, we were begging for interviews. Like, we're doing whatever we could. We're making – I was pulling stuff out of my ass to, to get people yeah, to interview yeah. me. Now yeah. it's so bad. I'm like, I'm just happy you guys want to talk to me because there's, there's – between all the big major networks plus yeah. everything the UFC puts you guys through, then you yeah. have us. And we all get in there, and it's like, come on, guys. Like, if they say no, I don't take it personal. So. Travis got a he's got a family. He's got stuff going on. He's not dealing with me. He's got he wants to go to sleep. Don't let it go. The worst for me was the written interview. The guy that would send you the email with the questions oh, and wants you yeah. to answer. I'm like, no, bro. Like, hold on a second. So I've gotten that from like, and my manager knows now not to even ask me because he he sent me a couple of emails like, hey, bud, uh, I have this guy. He either you know he'd rather send you stuff uh, so you can answer it on the email. Um, or, you know, do you want a phone call? And I was like, dude, I'm on a freaking phone call. I don't want to sit here and spend half an hour typing something out when it could take me five minutes, just a quick phone call. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's very, That's how it goes. very difficult. And so time consuming to sit there and type and write mm -hmm. these answers out and make sure the spelling's correct. And what I started doing is like, if you really want to give me a written interview, I give them an audio file back of the answers. So I'm actually yeah. answering their questions, you know, with, with my answers. And then give it back yeah. to them and go, like, you guys can figure it out from there. Like, I'm not going to deal with this mess. If you need to transcribe right. it and turn it into a written interview, that's on you. Like, I can't deal with it. You know? See, and that's where, that, that too, and at the end of the day, you know, this is what we do for a living. We chose, I, I chose this, we chose this. So, um, 
you know, there just has to be some kind of organization to it. And that's what I think that's what the UFC does a good job of is, you know, Chris Costello, um, Dave Schaller, Ryan Grab, all those guys over there at, um, at UFC, they're like, hey, Trav, you know, any interview requests, just run it, just send them our name and our number, and we'll screen them for you. Yeah, you know I mean, and that way it's like, hey, you know, we're all a team working together, getting to the biggest networks, getting out to the most people, you know what I mean? And it's, it, it works that way. And it's, and it's, it weeds out the, I hate to say this, but it weeds out the garage guys. It weeds out the mom's yeah. basement guys. You know, like, like yeah. look, we, we want to entertain you. But Travis Brown's got a full schedule, and we really can't deal with your seven guys. Like, we can't deal with the seven people that listen to you. It's, it's just not worth it to us. So, and, I, and that is Chris Costello is really good about that. Like even when I first started doing interviews, he checked me, and yeah. we went to the same high school. Like we're yeah. we're, from, we're, we're at the same, high, and he was checking me. Like, oh, like hold on, what's your viewership? Like what's happening? Like I get you're a McQuaid kid, but I really got to know. Like really, you know, what's your viewership? I had to give my viewership numbers. Like this is this is who's watching, and he's like, okay, okay, not okay. You can come in a little a little bit at a time. All right, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. Checking yeah. me out. So. Yeah. yeah that, that's the thing, though, man. It, you know, it is what it is, and we're just making the best out of it. Well, let's talk about Fabrizio Vadu. Enough about the media. Sure. Um, obviously, he's a great grappler. He's a, he's a, he's a tough opponent. You, you're, you're a bomber, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, if he stands in front of you, he's going to get knocked out. His teeth are going to end up on, on, his, on his ass because you're literally going to smack his head all the way around, and he's going to have to kiss his own butt to get up off the canvas. That's what's going to happen. That's how you fight. So we know mm -hmm. he's not going to stand in front of you. We know he's going to try and take you down right away. He knows he's going to try and make this a ground game. Everybody knows this. Anybody that pays attention to this fight knows that's what's going to happen. What are you doing to counteract that? And who are you training with? Well, I got um, I got some of the best, man. I got, obviously, here at Jackson's. Um, I train every day with the likes of John Jones. Um, we have uh, other heavyweights in here. We have Anthony Hamilton, who actually just signed with the UFC. He's a good wrestler, man. It's, you know, um, we got guys like Cody East, but um, uh, my other coaches are Ricky Lundell and Neil Melanson. So, you know, Melanson is like, you can't get any better of a Verdun than Melanson. Yeah. And, you know, that guy came out um, for a while, actually, and really helped me with this camp. And during the first week he was here, man, I would get so angry and frustrated because he was just, you know, he was beating me up. And I, we also had, I also had Frank Mir here, too. Oh. Um, you know, and just like, you know, working every position, working from their guard or working off my back, you know, in case something weird happens, you know, I mean, we're, we're ready for this guy. There, there's no better training that you could ever get for Verdun than a guy like Neil on the ground. I'm actually mad at you because I went down, I was planning a surprise trip down to San Diego because Neil's my black belt coach. I was going down to go work out with him. Like just going to show up and like, Hey, look, here I am. Let's, let's get some rounds in whatever. And I hit him up when I was like, 45 minutes away from, from the Lions. He's like, um, I'm in Albuquerque. Like, I, like, what the? I'm training yeah. Travis Brown right now. Like, oh, screw that yeah. guy. He screwed me up. So, yeah, like, you, you ruined my day for me. My bad. My bad. I ruined your surprise trip. Yes, you did. Yeah, which, which teaches me a lesson to always call before you show up at somebody's house. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, right. right. Unless, you're, unless you're bringing vodka, then it's okay. But otherwise, there, there you go. Um, <laughs> how is it trained with Mir? Because he such, he's such a good, well rounded fighter. At the end of his career, but also understands he could train with me and not hurt me, but make me let me know that I'm in trouble. Yeah. What's he like working working for you? Is he a great training partner? Or is he just one of those guys that just gets mean and evil and beats you up the whole time? No, nah, man. He's actually, you know, we we have to. There, there's times during the round we're doing like uh, where we're doing five rounds of where you know I'm hitting hard with the with the Met coach, uh, Coach Mike Valley, mm -hmm. and then um, I would have. Uh, you know, Neil or uh, Frank trying to take me down off the cage or me on my back and trying to get up. And then we do that for until I was able to get space, you know. And um, there were times that I had to, you know, tell Frank, Frank, man, I, I need you to pick it up. I need you. You know, he's actually some, he, sometimes he's almost too cautious. You know what I mean? Which, which is great because he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He's a big dude. And if he puts horsepower behind Whatever he does, it's, I mean, you know, look at Tim Sylvia's arm, look at, you know, Noguera's arm and stuff. So he, he hurts people. And, um, but in training, he's actually the opposite. He's actually very controlled and, and, you know, he lets you tell him, Hey, I need you to pick it up or I need you, you know I mean? Whatever. And he's very good about doing so. Yeah. I used to roll them a little bit too. And it was always great to roll with him. I never got the best of him by any means. He always made, let me knew that I was always in trouble. But he did it in such a fashion that I was like, oh, crap, here goes my knee. Okay, oh, here goes my ankle now. Like, he doesn't do any of that. 
but he lets you know, yeah. look, if I want to crank this, I can crank this thing. You're stuck. So there's yeah. a lot of tapping to the to the to the untrained eye, tapping really early in yeah. positions that I was like, I'm stuck. Like I'm never gonna get out of this position. He's got me caught, but I've learned my lesson. So it looks yeah. like, oh, you're tapping to nothing. When in reality, he's just being nice to me. Yeah. You, you get that yeah. same sense too that sometimes you're doing stuff with Frank. He's like, you're like, okay, thanks. I get it. I learned my lesson. Let's fix this thing now and, and move on. Yeah, definitely. I, I've learned that with Frank and um and you know Neil. I think um, uh, Coach Neil Melanson. He he was like he would go a little bit softer with me in the beginning, but now he knows that like hey, I can I can kind of handle my own, my own. And the way that I learn is by getting my butt kicked. So if you get something, make me feel like you have it. Don't don't just like grab a heel hook or something and just sit there. Freaking grab it and tighten it up so I can't go nowhere, and then and then I'll tap and stuff, you know. So I, I'm I'm a little bit more like, okay, I, I, you know, especially in fight mode. Not when I'm learning. When I'm learning, I'm like, okay, yeah, you got it. Okay, yeah, you got it. Okay, what do how do I get out of this position from the get go? When I'm in fight camp, it's like he's throwing up triangles from every which every which way, and I have to get out of them. You know what I mean? So I'm fighting and I'm getting out and this and that and. Um, you know, and there's so many times that he would catch me in a triangle or an arm bar. But towards the end, man, towards the end, it was good. It was really good training. I'm totally confident in everything now, well, especially with those two guys in particular. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, cardio is great. Your strength is up. But really what we want to know about is the epic beard. Are you going to keep growing it to the fight? Or are you actually going to trim it down a little bit, you know, around the edges before the fight actually comes up? No way. Unless uh, the, there's two people. Uh, I would say four people that would that could have an effect on my beard. Um, two being my two boys. If they were like, Dad, come on, Dad. You know what I mean? I'm like, I, I got to consider it, you know. Uh, the the other one is being my woman. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, my boss. You know what I mean? Like one of my bosses. So any any of those people say, hey, it's got to go or it's got to get cleaned up or something, I'll, I'll, you know what I mean? I'll definitely do it. But until then, I do a pretty good job, you know what I mean, of, of maintaining it. It's not like a Roy Nelson beard where it's as long as it is wide, right. you know what I mean? And, and like growing in patches, you know what I mean? So, and it's obvious, you know, that I wash it and condition it and baby the damn thing, you know? Put some, put some leave-in conditioner in that thing and comb it out to you. You, oh, brush, yeah. you, got, you have a special brush. It's just a beard brush. Is that what it is? Yeah, man. You got you got to do it up. There's, you know, the art of shaving. The art of shaving it does wonders. <laughs> this that's I think that's actually your first book. Is is how to maintain a, a how to maintain a healthy beard during a training camp. That's your first. Yeah, book. man. Oh, dude, it goes through hell. And you know what's funny is if I don't take care of it, I will be like, damn, this thing is crusty. It is gross. Like I need to do something about it because. You know, I'm not that guy that shows up in two day old underwear, not putting on deodorant and says, Hey, let's roll. You know, I, mean, I hate those guys. So if my you know, if I'm gonna have this thing, I'm gonna take care of it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna wash them and make sure that my training partners are okay with it, you know, because I mean we're sweating in it. you know, when you're training and like say somebody's on top of you, okay, ready, go. And then all of a sudden like sweat starts pouring into your eyes and in your mouth and up your nose and your ears, you're like I just want to make sure that thing's clean. Like, if that thing's clean, I'm okay with the sweat dripping in my face right now. But if it ain't clean, if you got freaking nasties in there, get the hell thing away from me. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having a guy that always has to wear a particular knee sleeve or a particular ankle or, or like an elbow pad or whatever. So he never washes it because he has to wear it three times a day every day. And then, like, yeah. wears it for a week and come that Friday, you're like, Jesus, man, this is killing me. You got to do something else with this thing. See, I'm, I'm just, uh, maybe, maybe like I said in some of my interviews uh, with Joe Rogan, I'm a new breed of heavyweight, but I like to stay clean. I'm, I'm hygienic. You know what I mean? Like, if that's going to be the case, if I need to wear a knee sleeve, I'm going to get five of those damn things so I can rotate them. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's all, that's what I do with my gloves. That's what I do with my shin guards. I have like three pairs of everything and I rotate like, okay. I wore these Monday. I'm not going to wear them until Thursday or Friday. You know what I mean? Yeah, any time to dry and air out and to be disinfected. Oh. And yes, that's smart. I wish more guys would pay attention like that because there's enough crap running around the gyms. You know, yeah. As far as viruses go, and some dirty gear. And you got to take care of your gear. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Guys open their bags in the corner of the gym and they smoke out the gym. You're like, what the hell? Did you, have you not opened that thing for like six months or what the hell's going on? Well, you know, like, I went on vacation for a week. I trained a week ago Friday and then, you know, I was yeah. gone for a week and it's Tuesday. <laughs> so, I just opened it now. You're like, what? The, oh, God. I hate he that. He does a good job of that actually too. Is Tim Kennedy does a good job of airing out his stuff. We'll walk out of the gym when we're all done sparring 
and his gear is like hanging from his mirrors, hanging like on his car. Like his uh, windows are open. He has them like l- draped over like all the w- different windows. And, you know, he does a good job of doing that. I, I just get it. I throw my bag in the back of my truck. I pull out all my gear into the bed of my truck. So it sits in the sun, you know, for the entire day. Oh, yeah. And then, and then I bring it inside at night. You know what I mean? That way it doesn't get mildewy or nasty or anything like uh, that. There's nothing worse than dirty gear. No. Oh, so all right, bad. Travis. Thanks for uh, thanks for the beard beard advice, the gear advice, and uh, talking yeah. about your fight. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck there on April nineteenth. There's, the there's, there's my second book. Is beard and gear. <laughs> That's the, there it is. We see. And there, all I'm asking there, for is fifty percent of the proceeds. So it's perfect. There you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, Travis. Talk to you soon, bud. Thanks, man. We'll see you.